Hi there, in this video tonight I'm talking about whether to rebuild the Peep 379 with a cat engine or keep the Cummins that's in it. The cat would be coming from a Kenworth W900 that went in fire. Do I rebuild that? I'll do not. We'll go through the figures here and if you've got any comments please leave them in the comment section at the bottom of the screen. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you like the video. How goes it there, YouTube? This is Tommy here. I've got a couple of options that I'm looking at with my yellow truck that's back at the workshop, needs an engine, and a motor, and as they call it in the States, and my blue one that went in fire. So really I've got the front end of a Kenworth and the back end of a Peterbilt that's pretty good. The Kenworth has it's a W900, 2007 uh, with a cat motor in it, which is a good motor. A really good 13 speed transmission behind it, and the blue, the back from the cab is melted trim in it. Um, the sleeper's gone, it needs a new sleeper. Uh, and if you've seen the previous videos, you'll see the damage to it. The yellow one was going into California and the engine just locked up, um, just died. So we haven't done a lot of investigation into that, except the main Peterbilt dealer in Elko, Nevada said that the motor was locked up. Haven't checked it, still need to check it here, but based on what the main dealer told us, it sounds like the motor is humped. So, uh, I would say that if it's been doing 75 mile an hour and it's locked up, chances are that there's some serious damage inside it. Don't know yet, but it costs money to start pulling these things apart. I can do it myself with a couple of more days of admin stuff to catch up and then I can go into the workshop while my daughter's at school. Uh, I would say that it's probably going to be over 30 grand to fix the engine in it because probably the crank has been grabbed or the cams have spun or something something somewhere when it's when it locks up at that speed is damaged don't know what don't know to what extent but it's going to be pulling it apart you pull it apart to fix it you've got to do a rebuild and you go down that far so Call it 30 grand on the inside. Uh, the blue one, <laughs> the, the pictures that I saw were no, nowhere near uh, gave any justice to the fire damage to it. So that's, you know, when the peat's fixed up, it's probably worth, I would think, 65 to 70 grand with a rebuilt motor in it. Um, might have put some straight pipes on that girl. The blue one, when it's fixed up, and it would have to have a brand new paint job on it because you'd have a different coloured sleeper from the front of the truck and if you're going to go that far you might as well paint it. Uh, so I would say if it was a fresh paint job it's probably worth 75 with a car engine in it, W900, you know that's kind of where they're at. I never paid that for it. Um, I remember what I paid for it. However, to put the yellow one back in the road is going to be 30 grand and I would say three weeks labour, three weeks time. A truck right now is doing 10 grand. You take the fuel and the driver off it, you might be left with four. The time you pay your insurance and all that, but the thing's still insured as it is, sitting in the yard. Um, so you're losing that revenue. The quicker I can get that back in the road, the better. So I'd need to have 30 grand real money to put into that. The blue one, I 
I'm quite pleased myself actually that I've done sums rather than just think, hey, I could have a W900 and 379 and they would be all nice and prettied up and good motors in them and nice paint jobs and they'd be worth some money. But the reality is, is that you need to have real cold, hard cash to put that motor in it. And at the same time, Jeff thinks he could put that Kenworth uh, back on the road. And so that's all good and well. He's, I don't doubt his abilities, but I doubt my abilities to pull it all off uh, and the amount of time it will take to do it. So, from looking at that blue Kenworth W900, I would say that it's probably going to cost um, minimum 10 grand in labour um, to do all the work on it. The wiring from underneath the sleeper right to the back is all gone, needs to be replaced. Uh, including the time, the lights, the wires, the, you know, all the labour in that, I figured a couple of grand for that. The airbags are gone, all the seals will be gone in the hubs inside and out, same with the seals and the rear ends, the brakes will be, sh will, you know, everything's got super hot on it, so I figured about four grand on that. Uh, the cross members that are aluminum or aluminium. Uh, if I got those from a breakers, I'd have to source all this stuff. That'll be a couple of grand for those parts. Uh, where, where the the suspension parts, where the shocks attach at the back, they're aluminum. They're all melted. So a couple of grand for those being kind. Probably eight hundred bucks for shocks. Um, I'd need to buy the rear half because there's been so much heat on the frame rails that I would think that I don't know what that would cost me but I would say probably uh, let's just leave that part off at the minute I need a sleeper and a budget about four grand for a sleeper I need eight wheels a couple hundred bucks each from the breakers up but it uh, holds truck sales truck parts Four grand for eight tires on the back of it. Uh, it'll need a fifth wheel, a paint job. I budgeted ten grand in there. Labour's ten. That's thirty seven six. Before um, I buy the frame rails and the rear end, you know, and the extra metal you got to buy. So I probably think maybe six grand for that. I'm I'm just guessing. So that's at forty three forty three six. And so if I I've got forty three six to put it right, plus I don't know how long that's going to take. That's weeks, weeks and weeks to do that work. Um, Jeff does a lot of other things, and it'd be a kind of project thing. So I'm guessing two to three months to put that. You know cut the frame and replace it and put fish plates in there and all that good crap. So the hood though, I think I would get three grand for the hood and grill that's on it right now. Uh, I put a brand new steering box on it and I paid, I think I paid $1,100 for that. So if I took that at nine, uh, radiator, 500 bucks. Um, the steer wheels, you know, the front wheels on it are still good. The tires are good. So, Call that a thousand dollars for the wheels and tires, uh, and probably once it's all picked apart, the scrap value of it is two grand, and then the transmission in it is a really good thirteen speed, which is worth about I think about four grand. I would give four grand for that transmission. So there's about eleven thousand four hundred salvage, and forty three six, um, you know. So we're looking about. $55,000 to put it right it might be worth 75 when it's done however uh, it's a whole headache to do it and I can get the cat engine taken um, wait a minute I've got this backwards here I can take the cat engine out and that saves me having to spend thirty thousand dollars on the yellow trucks engine. The the motor mounts are the same. There's a couple of little adapt adaptations that you'd have to make for the water hoses and 
your air hoses and stuff, but it's very doable to change that over. Um, probably maybe four grand in labour to do that. I can start, I can disconnect it all in both engines and we've got the cranes there um, to lift the, the motor and transmission out all in one go. Um, that's how we do it. Uh, take the Cummins out, the yellow one, and then take the cat out of the Kenworth, slide that in. Uh, a week would do that, and that puts my yellow truck back in the road in a week, and it's back out to doing 10 grand a week in revenue. Um, so that puts that back in the road without, for the price of maybe four or five grand to Jeff for his labour and bits and pieces that we need to do that. So five grand puts that back in the road in a week. Boom, done. I do lose a truck with the blue one going, but uh, I don't think it's worth spending 43,500 on it uh, plus 30,000 on the red one. I'm at 73,000 there. Plus if I sell the bits and pieces off of the blue truck for another 11, you know, I'm above $80,000 difference there. Uh, the heart says, go ahead, rebuild the blue one, uh, rebuild the yellow one, and go through the, all the pain. But to be honest with you, if I was 20 years younger, I'd maybe think about it. But now I just think, is it worth the butt ache of having to do all that? And I just think, no, it's no. I just think I'll just go over there. And one day, in between in school time when my daughter's at school, go over there one day, pull all the stuff off, the yellow one, take the hood off it, you just get ready to put the engine in it, you get ready to pull that one out. I mean, I can do that quickly, you get the two of them ready to pull, disconnect the drive line, the gear tower, all that stuff ready to come out, and then just pull it out, stick the yellow one in, the, the cat in the yellow engine, the yellow truck, and away we go. That, I might be oversimplifying it a little bit there. But a car engine and a Peterbilt makes it worth a whole lot more money than it is with a Cummins. Bear this in mind. Um, we've got a debt that's owed to us and there's a truck that's sitting in the yard there that my, one of my friends owns it, but he wants rid of it and he owes us some money. And the he doesn't have a title to it, it's his brother's and so we might take that green freight liner that's sitting there and it's got two new rear ends it needs an engine kit which I can get for about eight and a half grand it's got a 500 horse Detroit in it uh, and when you do that to rebuild that engine maybe I might be into that 15,000 um, and if I take the transmission, it's in the Kenworth, the 13 speed. Man oh man, that would be a nice little truck. It drives so nice, the front end is tight on it, it's smooth, um, it's light as a feather. Good truck in the oil field, 500 horses with 13 speed in it. And the 500 horse Detroit has just been, would, would have just been rebuilt. So we could put the 13 speed into that, and that would give me, using Parting out that green truck, that would give me those trucks up and running. The white truck that we've got doing in the oil field, it's tired. It's got a little horse engine, it's about 400 horses and a Cummins ISX. You see where I'm going now? I'm thinking that if I take that engine plus my Cummins out, the yellow one, make one out of the two, I'll put a kit in it obviously, but if there's a bad head or if there's something bad, May have to buy some parts, but if I buy the kit for an ISX and rebuild the one that's coming out of the yellow truck, combining that with the, some of the parts that's on the other one, you know, if I've got cams that have spun or something like that, um, or the crank is damaged or anything like that, I would just pull it out of the other one. So hopefully I've got one of each good thing, you know, and make a good ISX motor with the new, with the pistons and liners and everything in it. Um, and whack that together, stick it in the white one. So then I'd have the white one with a rebuild in it, the green freight liner with a rebuild in it, 
the yellow one with a cat in it and these are quite doable things without massive oh 30 grand to that one 43 to that one you know it just becomes a bit uh, futile really we don't know anything in the Kenworth so the engine's free the insurance paid it off and we bought it back for eight thousand dollars so I'm into that truck nothing I owed less than that on it so we got the truck back we all we had to do is pay the storage and go get it and brought it back um, yeah we lost eight grand by taking it but who wouldn't take that you know um, that gets me that cat engine to go into my my peak so I think that's the way to go I've done it based on sums no emotion or oh that looks pretty or that would be nice done it solely on figures so if anybody's got any thoughts on what I've just discussed hey throw them at me in the comments please that would be great thanks for watching I'll let you know what we decide and where we go from here okay see you later Thank you.